Hey y'all, it's Nancy the Handy Scandy here with Whimsy Stamps. Thanks for joining me here today. I am going to be using two very simple ink blending techniques that provide really striking results. I'm very happy with these cards and I just want to share them with you today so we're going to jump right in. Most of the products that I'm using are either brand new or relatively new, but everything will be linked and listed downstairs in the description box. So you can find everything down there. And I just jump right into the process. I have this thatched embossing folder and I'm doing just a little bit of partial embossing. So you can see that I'm kind of lining up my images, trying to figure out which one I want to use and making sure that I have enough room at the top of the panel for my actual image. So we got that done and I love this embossing folder. It just creates such beautiful texture and it's so deep and it's not a 3D folder, but it's, it's just very effective. So here I am taking just a piece of, it's kind of a shimmery brown cardstock from my stash and I have sprayed some of my Dilutions ink spray. This is the milk chocolate color. Sprayed that right onto the folder and then I run it through my die cut machine. Now you can see that I use too much pressure and my cardstock is actually kind of uh, embedded, if you will, <laughs> into the grooves of the folder. So I have to pull out my reverse tweezers in order to pull it out. But I just love the texture, the layers, the dimension. I mean, you can see the variety of colors. You've got the color of the cardstock and then the deeper chocolate brown of the ink spray. And you can see where the paper kind of cracked a little bit. And it even has those, those lighter colors. I mean, it just looks like legit thatching. I just think it's really cool. So that's the start of card number two. So we're bouncing back to card number one and we're going to mask off that thatching, that thatching <laughs> with just a little bit of masking tape. And here I'm going to do some down and dirty ink blending and this takes us to technique number one. So I am calling this baby wipe ink lift. So, but I'm not there yet. Of course, I have to do my down and dirty ink blending and now I've got a little bit of weathered wood some speckled egg as well as some stormy sky and laying them down in no particular order to be honest but it does take a minute so you know normally i don't worry about splotching and evenness and and even the blending of the colors now on this one i'm a little more concerned just because just because you see so much more of this background but again you know i don't i don't sweat stuff like that like i know I know what I'm going to do with the panel. I know how much of it is going to be covered. And so I just, I just lay it down. This is where my technique number one comes in. So I lay down my Sunrise stencil, <clears throat> excuse me, also from Whimsy Stamps. It's new to me and I'm so glad that I have it. But when you take that baby wipe and you go through the embossing folder, you want to make sure that you rub that, that wet baby wipe in the direction of your stencil. So whether you're using a sun ray or something else, mm -hmm. you just want to make sure that, you know, you're going in the direction of the stencil because you could mess up the paper underneath. You could make your, um, the wetness kind of bleed through and you will be activating the ink in places that you don't want to activate or lift it. So yeah. Okay. Point taken. <laughs> so here we're going to have the aha moment and I just love that subtle effect. It is very subtle but I think it's striking and I think it kind of makes the whole scene once I get it put together. So here we have the starting or the starting, maybe the, I don't know the word I'm looking for, the base of each card. So you can see that one is a little more kind of rustic and, and grassy and natural and the other is just more of a beach scene. So here I have, first of all, I set aside the, um, the baby wipe folder or panel so that it could just dry, sit over there and dry. And so I'm working on stamping out my images and coloring as well as working on the other card. So you can see that I have this umbrella scene. It's all stamped out. I used a hybrid ink and I'm using my Arteza Ultra Everblends to kind of modify this scene so that instead of it being a beachy scene, it's now kind of a grassy knoll, if you will, because I just when I go to the beach, I like to be able to sit under an umbrella, under a tree in the grass, not so much on the sand. I like being out on the sand, but I really like the, the lush coolness of the grass. So that was kind of what I was trying to emulate here. So that small notch stitched slimline die that's up there in the top right corner that I'm using here to kind of audition my scene, that cut out that white panel that will actually be my scene. So it's a small scene. 
but I also wanted to, you know, make sure that this whole umbrella scene was going to fit and then I cut out the bottom again doing some partial die cutting with that same die to make sure that, that bo the bottom of my scene was going to fit. So here is technique number two. You saw it on the screen. I'm calling this fade out blending. It's really just a gradient of color from dark to light. Sorry, I needed a sip. And I'm just using one color. I'm just using Stormy Sky. I think it's Stormy Sky. And I'm just going from dark to light and it fades all the way into white. And again, I think it's just so striking. Just that simple one color. You guys, if you don't know me, I'm a more is more kind of girl. I like a variety of colors. I like layers of color. I like, you know, just more. That's just who I am. I'm a grungy kind of girl. And this clean and simple style, while I love it, I don't typically do it. But I am so in love with both of these cards. And I'm grateful that I can share them with you guys here today. So just like the sunray, the sunray scene, this one took a minute to lay down that ink. And you can see that it's very much imperfect. So there are some splotches and that kind of thing. You know, I, I didn't really worry about the, the splotching because I did try to get it mostly even, but I also didn't worry about the splotches because as it dries, the ink fades, it levels, and it softens. So the splotches kind of resolve as they go, but also the umbrella image is covering up any of those blemishes that are left, so you can't even see them now. And so here I am taking both panels together and I want to make sure that my edges lay down nice. I don't want my edges curling up or lifting. So while I have some of the double-sided tape, the double-sided adhesive tape, so that it all stays down, because that's kind of a kind of a hefty and very textured panel, I wanted to make sure that my edges lay down too. So that's why I used the liquid glue and just kind of smeared it all the way to the edges. And because I don't want to reactivate that ink, that's why I, I opened the card and turned it over and made sure that everything was adhered by pushing down with that little, it was a clean towel, it wasn't one of my messy towels. But I'm just loving this scene. Again, striking is, is just my word for the day. I think it is very striking. And I love it when I see other people do it. I've just never done it successfully myself. So again, thankful that I can share these with you guys here today. So you saw the, the full scene of the um, ink, what am I calling it? Fade out blending. <laughs> and then this is my baby wipe lift. And you can see how that, that beach hut really just kind of covers any blemishes that are on that sky as well. And I have the thank you, that's a new word die that was recently released from Whimsy and I actually ran that cardstock through the notched, or not the notched, the thatched embossing folder as well. So it's very subtle, but I, I like the, the white on white and the, the tone on tone, if you will, and the texture on texture. <laughs> so maybe it's a little redundant, but it, I think it's very pretty up close. And these sweet little clouds were created by using the dies from the Beachy Frogs stamp and coordinating die set. I only use the dies, as you can see. And this confetti is from This Calls for Confetti. These are the opal confetti, and they're so lovely. I think they add just that perfect little blingy bling that this card needed. Now on this card, I decided to add a little blingy bling as well, and I am using the Inca Gold confetti, again from This Calls for Confetti. And you can see on the left side of that umbrella where I did not fussy cut the, <laughs> the little notches out of the grass, grass umbrella. I did not notice that until everything was done and I was doing um, a voiceover. So it is what it is. I'll probably go back and fix it, but for now, this is real life. <laughs> and these are the final cards. So let me know what you think, guys. Do you like these two different techniques? They're super simple, but I, I find that they're striking. Let me know your thoughts downstairs. Do you have a favorite? Do you prefer clean and simple? Are you a grungy person like me? <laughs> let me know. I love to chat with y'all downstairs in the comments section. So you tell me what you want to talk about, and I'm here for it. Again, as I said earlier, all the products that I've used today are listed and linked downstairs in the description box. And we would love to see you on all of our social media platforms, especially the Whimsy Stamps Inspiration Facebook group. Come over there and join us. And until next time, guys, this is Nancy, the Handy Scandy, here for Whimsy Stamps. And until then, I am out. Mwah.